Hello, everyone. Uh, let's start the uh, technical session. So my name, uh, my name is Gan Bin Zheng. Uh, I, I was with uh, PPL Group for a long time, both as a PhD and a postdoc. And uh, today I'm very uh, happy to uh, chair the first uh, technical paper session. Uh, we will have four talks, and uh, both present by uh, four students in various groups. <laughs> Um, uh, the first talk will be presented by uh, Yan Hua San. Uh, she is a, a senior PhD student in the PPL group. Uh, in, th in this talk, she will talk about uh, uh, performance profiling uh, tools, frameworks uh, for Chan++. Okay. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about pigs. It's a, par a performance analysis based uh, in uh, no. a performance analysis is based uh, introspective uh, control system to the uh, parallel applications. This work has been accepted as a paper in Ross workshop uh, together with ICX uh, this June. As a motivation, as we know, modern com uh, parallel computer systems are becoming extremely complicated due to the uh, network topologies, the hierarchical storage systems, and uh, heterogeneous processing units, and so on. Therefore, it's very challenging to obtain best performance over different platforms for various applications. So there are a few approaches to, to tackle this problem to improve the parallel uh, performance and uh, productivity. Traditionally, developers wanted to let a compiler do the full automation. However, over the years, this approach has been proven to fail uh, due to its problem of not having dynamic analysis. And now this the reality is like MPI, it lets all the uh, let the developers do all their hand tuning. It requires too much effort. So the approach we are working on is uh, in between. So we try to develop an intelligent runtime system. Uh, for the runtime system, we do some uh, automation, while meantime, we still require some application-specific knowledge. So we believe that both application and runtime should be reconfigurable to adapt to use uh, different uh, configurations for various uh, situations. Therefore, we develop uh, the control system in Charm framework. The goal of the control system is to adjust uh, the configurations automatically based on the application specific knowledge and uh, runtime observations. So. Uh, in this talk, I'll first give an overview of PIX framework, and then I'll explain the concept of a control point, and then list a, a set of control points in the runtime system and the applications. And then I'll discuss how to use the automatic performance analysis to speed up the performance tuning. And then I'll present the APIs we have implemented in Charm framework. At the end, I'll discuss some results of using PICS to tune the benchmarks and real applications. So this figure shows, uh, this figure shows the framework of uh, PICS. There are three layers. We have the applications, including many applications, the real world application. They are running on top of the adaptive runtime system. Both application and uh, runtime system interact with our control system by registering contro uh, control points. Once these control points are registered to the uh, control system, control system store all the configurations and the corresponding performance for each configuration. During a uh, program execution, takes actually instrument the performance of the program and uh, by instrumenting, we collect all various uh, performance data. PIX framework also has a set of expert knowledge rules. This expert knowledge rules tells about the uh, various program characteristics and possible program, perf uh, per 
uh, problems and also some corresponding solutions to solve these potential problems. Once we have the performance data and expert uh, knowledge rules, we can use them to perform automatic analysis. The result of the analysis is correlated the, the performance with the control point, which can potentially fix the problems. And based on this result, control point will pick up the better values to improve the performance. This new configuration is fed back to the application and the runtime so that they can adapt to use these new configurations. So control point uh, is a very important uh, uh, concept here. Control point are tunable parameters for application and runtime to interact with the uh, control system. It's the first proposed in Julie's research. Control point has some special properties. First, it has its name. So the name is used by the developers to uh, register control point and query the value of uh, the control point. Its value includes uh, some default value from the user input and uh, minimum, maximum value, and also current value for the current uh, step. Every time when we change the value of the control point, we want to know what's the minimum uh, moving unit, whether it's increased one by one or multiplied by two. Uh, the other important pr uh, property is the effect. Effect is the direct aspect that when we change the uh, value of the control point, it will, uh, how it will affect the overall performance. Also, uh, with e effect, we also have the directions whether it decreases or increases the performance. So we have concluded a set of the control uh, uh, effects. Uh, for example, the degree of the uh, parallelism is anything about uh, how much parallel task we have. This is like uh, the in some stencil code, the uh, sub problem size can be uh, control point. They will in fact uh, how many ta parallel tasks we have. Some other effects include the green size. Uh, message priority to execute, message using uh, me memory usage, uh, GPU load, message size, number of messages, and uh, some other uh, effects you can think about. There are two types of control points, including application control points and runtime control points. Application control points are provided by the developers specific to each application. Besides registering the application control points, the application should also be written in the way that it should be adapted to uh, reconfigure it uh, to use the new configurations once the control system pick up the new values. In this table, we uh, after examining some uh, common uh, applications, we have listed a set of uh, control points uh, in this table. The first one is like uh, the uh, sub block size. It's used by the Jacobi based some stencil code. The effect of these control points is, is to affect the parallelism, granularity, and the overhead of the program. I will not talk about the detail of the others, but this are very useful to tune your application performance. So the other type is the runtime control system. Traditionally, the configurations for the runtime system don't change. They are based either on the experience or from the user input. However, we believe the configuration for the runtime system it should be tunable so as it can achieve the best performance over different platforms for different applications. Also depends on the problem size, it should be tunable. So these control points are registered by the runtime itself. Once these control points are registered by the runtime system, it requires no change from the application. And it will affect all the applications running on this uh, system. So 
in this table, we li list a set of the counterpoint in the runtime system. For example, here, for the broadcast algorithm, whether we use a spanning tree-based uh, uh, architecture or hypercube-based uh, architecture, it will affect the communication, also meant the critical path length. This will be used by most applications with collectives. Some other counterpoints are also listed here. After we register the counterpoint, we, the text framework need to observe the program behaviors. Since our control system and runtime takes full control of the application execution, so it's very easy to record all of these events. So some important events include uh, the begin idle time and idle time. This will tell about uh, how, uh, how busy each processor is and uh, what the uh, load balance uh, looks like. And it will also record the function execution, begin execution time and execution time so that we can get some statistics about the uh, maximum, um, minimum, average function execution time. For communication, we can record the message uh, creation, message size, message source, destination, so we can get whether communication will be a bottleneck or not. In order to analyze some sequential performance, we have the hardware counters like the PEPI integrated in this framework. So uh, in, order to, uh, in order to record all of this event, it requires no source code modification. For Charm, it's just a, a runtime option. You just need uh, to link a module, and in runtime, it will automatically do this. After we have recorded all of these events, we can get uh, some performance summary data that will be used by later. So as we mentioned, we have so many uh, control points. If we, per, if we perform a direct search over all of these configurations, it will be very time costing, uh, consuming. So the problem is how to reduce the search space. So the approach we came up here is to use automatic, uh, automatic performance analysis to identify program pro problems and correlated these problems with uh, some associated control points. And then we only adjust uh, this control point while ignoring some other control points. We have categorized the pr uh, program problems into three types, including deconversation, mapping, and uh, scheduling. For the decom this figure shows the program characteristic about uh, decomposition. When decomposition is a problem, the, uh, the program characteristic and, uh, and patterns shown in these boxes, like we might have some longer uh, function executor than the average load on the each processor. We have uh, two big uh, single objects. So the solution to solve this problem is to decrease the grain size. And also for communication, if we observe the byte per message is low, we can try to increase the grain size. Also, if we observe too much communication on one particular object, so we can decrease the grain size, or we can replicate uh, the objects uh, to multiple processors. For sequential performance, if we observe high cache base rates, we can try to decrease the grain size so that we expect, we hope the data will fit cache. When uh, mapping is a problem, the most serious problem is the, uh, there will be load imbalance. The code responding the solution is to trigger the load balancer. Even load is perfect uh, in, uh, balanced, the performance might be bad. To, uh, bad. So the, if we see too much external c communication or we see the total communication time is much higher than the uh, model time, we, like uh, what we use the log p model to get, we can perform the uh, test remapping 
to do some topology aware mapping. For scheduling problems, the most serious one is the uh, critical, pa uh, cri critical task are delayed. So that in this case, the solution is prioritized the task on the critical task. We also have some other uh, program problems uh, shown here, like if we observe the byte per message is low, we can aggregate these messages to uh, send bigger messages. If we observe the reduction broadcast is a problem, we can adjust the counterpoint related to collective operations. And if we observe a very big message and a long latency, we can try to compress this message to reduce the communication load. So we combine all uh, about the uh, problems and uh, form this complete decision tree. For this complete decision tree, we have different levels. We have the uh, top level pro, uh, performance data and we have different uh, boxes represent uh, the uh, program pro problems. And each egg here is a corresponding solution to solve the uh, problems. Here, if we look at this tree, we can observe that one box can have multiple children. So that means uh, when one problem occurs, we can have multiple solutions. One egg here can have multiple parents that means uh, multiple problems can be solved uh, using the same solution. After we have this tree, the process of uh, performing automatic analysis is like to traverse the tree using the performance data we have instrument and collected. And uh, we match this performance data to the uh, nodes of this tree so that we can have the, a set of uh, performance problems corresponding each problem, we have a set of uh, solutions. We save these solutions, and if we look at uh, uh, carefully, each solution is also uh, corresponding to uh, some effect of uh, some control points. So in this way, we can figure out what control point we will need to tune. Also, each solution tells about whether to decrease the value or increase the value. The, the, therefore, we know in which direction we should change the control point value. For some solutions, uh, they, they also tell about by how much we should change the control point value. For example, if we found some object load is much more than the average load, what we can do here is to divide the maximum object load by the average load, we know how many pieces we should split this big object into. Based on this result, we fit this into the control point database based on current value, the uh, tune direction, uh, the by how much, this degree, we can pick up the next uh, web configuration that the program will use to for better performance. So here uh, we show the API. We have, uh, we have developed an in-charm system. It's mainly about uh, the properties we have uh, about uh, the control points. In order to use the control point, we have also provided these uh, functions. User needed to register the control point for sci most the scientific applications, application developers can also tell about what's the start time, uh, start step, end step by using these two functions. For multiple phase ap applications, these functions are used to, uh, to mark the phase boundary. After we have tuned the values, we can query the new configurations that use this function. So now I'll talk about the experimental result of using takes to tune the benchmarks and applications. For each benchmark, I'll talk about 
what kind of point uh, we have added in that benchmark, and uh, what performance problem we have observed. And all of these results are running on Blue Gene Kill machines or Create XE6 machines. So the first experiment is to tune the number of uh, pipeline message here. Uh, we have uh, two processors. Processor A send two megabyte data to processor B. Before sending the data, processor A performs some computation. After B receives the data, it also performs some computation. What we can do is to split this two megabyte data into multiple pieces, and then every time we do uh, some computation, send part of the uh, data, and then B start to c compute. In this way, we can overlap the communication and this computation. So this figure shows the process of uh, performance tuning. We start with uh, one big chunk of message. So for this step, we, uh, the PIX framework uh, observes that the hi uh, high idle time, the degree of overlapping communication and uh, com uh, computation is low. So it is suggests that to increase the, the number of uh, pipelines. So we increase the, uh, this control point and then the overall performance becomes better. After some threshold, we observe the overhead starts to dominate. The overall performance becomes uh, uh, worse. We can observe here, zero, zero. It's a little bit worse, but it's hard to observe. And then from this point, we re reverse the searching direction, and we decrease the control point value. So we go, go back and forth three times uh, after that, we pick up uh, the value with the best uh, configuration, and uh, then we use this configuration for the rest of the run, and then we observe the performance uh, becomes uh, stable, and uh, it's much better than the initial performance. So the next benchmark is about uh, to tune the message compression algorithm uh, compress network data, reduce the network load, potentially improves the performance. However, whether it really benefits uh, application performance depends on multiple factors, like uh, compression rate, compression speed, and also the network uh, latency bandwidth, network bandwidth, not latency. So uh, in charm runtime system, we have five compression algorithms. It's a uh, runtime uh, con uh, control point. In order to estimate uh, how to use this control point to select uh, the correct uh, co uh, compression algorithm, we develop a synthetic all-to-all benchmark. In this all-to-all benchmark, uh, each processor sends two messages to all the other processors, but these two messages have different patterns that uh, they have the different uh, compression rate. So here, message one has very high compression rate, and message two has very low compression rate. Therefore, we have two, uh, two control points uh, to control whether uh, what compression algorithm to use for each uh, for each messaging. So for the uh, first half, we search the over the five configurations for the first message, and we. Uh, we pick up the best value, use this best value, and then we tune the second uh, control point for the second message. After we have tuned both of these messages, we pick up the best value for these two uh, control points and use them for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the execution. And we observe that uh, the final performance is better than the initial performance. And also here, for uh, what we observe is for the first message, we don't, uh, for the first message with high compression rate, we pick a compression algorithm, while for the second one, we don't use the compression algorithm at all. So this figure shows the tuning of the for Jacobi 3D pr uh, relaxation problem. Uh, usually we think uh, there, when there's one parallel task per call, we achieve the best performance. However, it's not necessarily true. Here, 
We run this problem on using 64 cores. The control point we add here is a sub, sub block size in XYZ dimension. Therefore, we have three control points. And we started uh, this execution with using eight parallel tasks and uh, picks observe the high uh, idle time and also high cache miss rate that we it suggests to decrease the grain size so as to decrease the sub-block problem size. And then we observe the uh, idle time showing in this flow starts to decrease, and then CPU time also decrease because of a better cache, uh, cache, better cache hit rate. However, at, at some point, at this point, we observe the high uh, overhead due to too many tiny uh, parallel tasks, and then we reserve, reverse the search direction, and the performance starts to become better again. And then for the rest of the run, we use the best configuration. Here, the best configuration we have found is actually to use 64 parallel tasks per processor cores instead of uh, just uh, using one. So this figure we shows how to uh, tune the com uh, communication bottleneck in applications like uh, uh, what Sanju said about uh, we have the idea of replication, uh, replicate uh, objects over different processors to reduce the communication bottleneck. So this problem was discovered in Chang'e's uh, team and proposed uh, the uh, replication idea. But uh, here the problem is uh, how to know uh, how many uh, replication objects we should have to achieve a best performance. So this finger shows uh, compares whether to use this replication or not to use the replication. We say using replication uh, greatly improves the performance. For th for this time period, we use different uh, configurations and uh, we observe uh, various performance. And uh, then uh, over the various uh, configurations, we pick up the one that gives the best uh, config, uh, performance and uh, use that. Here, the best uh, configuration we observe is to use two uh, replication objects. Oh, that's the uh, uh, iteration, yeah, this is the simulation going on. So to conclude, we think that automatic performance tuning is required to improve both productivity and performance. Automatic performance analysis can uh, greatly help uh, uh, speed up the performance tuning, and we need to scale both uh, runtime system and application to achieve the best performance. Uh, that's all. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, the speaker. So, any question for this talk? Setting up any questions, just ask one question huh? about the mirror again. The, uh, the current techniques, the mirroring the pattern control point is just the degree of mirror. Oh, the, uh, the current control point is the degree of mirroring, which is constant for every uh, all the objects in the system. Correct. Right. Yeah. And because to vary it from object to object will require a li little more c a set a complicated setup because the requesters need to know how many replicas uh, there are. So, but that will be a useful thing if you go back to looking at uh, Xiang's presentation. 
uh, that thing didn't work because not every object needed to be replicated. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would suggest that as an extension, okay. which of course I could suggest to you in our meeting, but <laughs> I thought that was interesting.